It's all connected. 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 It's all with myself, Grimner, and the lovely Miss Circle. Yes. How are and, you? And uh, today we agreed on Grimner, right? We're going to pay just an hour tribute to the magnificent Trump, right? Oh, yeah. Endless Trump's, Trumpisms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> you all know we are the Trump supporters. Oh, yeah. Because, we, you know, we're, because we don't go out continually trying to smash, smash, smash down on him. That makes us supporters. No, no, I'm going to say that's like a um, underlying truth we all share. That um, that's one nasty psycho idiot, huh? Uh, I'm yeah. going to say that. Sure, no, it's. I think that's accurate. Um. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's supporting him. I'm guessing I'm supporting him. Yeah. Anyway, our yeah. topic for today, or our subject... Oh, it wasn't Trump. Oh, right. Right, right. Right, right, right. Yeah, my bad. All right. Anyway, the, the uh, subject for today of today's show is, the well-meaning are the worst. Hmm. And there's lots and lots of the well-meaning out there. Um, so, uh, you, you pick a, a group of well-meaning people to begin with. Yeah. Go ahead. The very yeah, you know, well, the the uh, the hopeful ones. The hopeful. But he, that's that's the question, though, right? Um, are the hopeful ones a terror organization? Generally speaking, I would I would say yes. Uh, yeah. The, those that are the well, you know, whether they're well, whether they're hopeful or just uh, thinking that they're well-meaning by. Uh, pushing their their beliefs of whatever onto everyone else that's around them and uh, doing it um, loudly uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and with as much force as they can muster. And they go out. And, 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 and the whole political thing is about, you know, especially during election time, right? It's about igniting that flame of hope in people. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, if you remember... Uh, <laughs> Uh, was it was it Obama? That was Obama. Hope and change. Yeah. Hope and change and keep hope alive. Was that keep keep hope yeah. alive? That might have been Jesse yeah. Jackson. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> keep hope alive. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's all about. Uh, we've been beating on you for four years now. Here we're going to throw you a match and light that flame of hope and go out there and do better. Right, right. Well, and and I and I think in in today's um, Corona land, Corona world, whatever you want to call it, uh, the hopefuls are those uh, the the mask Nazis. You know, the ones who hope they can stop and fight a uh, virus. Well, with with a mask that was never designed to do so. Yeah. Yeah, so they, but even they, can you imagine what the world would look like if we if we used warfare on a virus? Well, you know, I, I think they kind of said that was the uh, uh, that was the direction, <laughs> right? They, they, they say this this is a war against an invisible enemy. Wasn't that a, well, wasn't wasn't that a Trumpism? Um, and that he, <laughs> we're gonna fight this war against this invisible enemy, and we are gonna win. <laughs> well, that's ridiculous. That's like a war on a plant, man. Come on. Well, you know, <laughs> like war, war on terrorism. You're fighting an ideology. Yeah. You're not fighting a person or a group no. or a country. No. You're fighting against somebody's thought. Um, yeah. And 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 the only reason it's considered terrorism is because you disagree with it. But isn't that the same as the fight on racism and sexism and homophobia? And all? It's all thought crimes. Oh, yeah. Well, whenever, and the thing is, whenever they have a war on whatever, you only wind up with more of whatever. And 
uh, your your war is is designed <laughs> to lose. Yeah. To be a to be a failing cause. I mean. I don't know, cause I I can be one of the hopeful, though, right? I have the hopeful in me. You um, do, but as far as I know, you don't go out there and try and shove that down other people's throats. No, I already did that because I am not an idiot. I don't keep repeating the same action and suddenly expect it to magically become something that it isn't. I already tried that. I already tried the whole activism. I already tried that whole thing. And and all I got was more of the same. Right. <laughs> well, I mean that that's uh, that's kind of that's kind of how it works, right? Uh, Any logic person would say, okay, if I'm getting more of the same, trying to fight, getting any right, uh -huh. then then not fighting this is going to be the good choice, though, right? For now, you know, the first action you well, do is, oh, stop doing this, then, right? Well, I, I mean, if you if you've tried whatever method you're doing to defeat whatever it is you're fighting against, and and you continually have it not work. You could either try a different method to fight that or see what it is actually that you're fighting against. And if, you're, if your thinking was proper uh, to yourself, of course, not proper to anybody else because you... You're... But I'm not just seeing that it doesn't work, though. I am seeing that um, it's getting worse by election. It's like growing. Getting worse by election. You mean each election it gets worse? Yeah, I think for every election, whether it's and, and I can only speak for Denmark, though, right? But for every election, the the state grows more and more power. The laws become more uh, plentier and plentier. Uh, the control becomes more and bigger and bigger, right? Everything is more and more centralized. For every election cycle, this beast goes through. It feeds and it grows. So the logic when I first when I, yeah, I identified that. And I thought, okay, the beast is growing through these cycles of of election and these cycles we it goes through, right? The first thing I did was, okay, stop feeding it. Okay, Just walk away from the but, beast. But, but it, it's not getting smaller, man. But do you believe the election actually has anything to do with it growing, or it's uh, just yeah. a natural process of because? Such no, I think that I think that for all the propaganda each election period and campaign uh, period brings, um, people uh, it grows by that it feeds by that people somehow buy more and more into it. Right, the people buy it into gets it. It's more and more real. The, the people buy into it, but uh, let's just, let's just say okay, there's not any election, uh, but the people out there are still wanting more and more. Uh, from this group of people that can't really supply any of the things they want, um, but, but no, I'm pretty sure the beast would find another way to feed, though. But a lot of the smoke screen would be go would be gone. Without the elections, the whole smoke screen of participate and hope, right? Mm -hmm. That whole smoke screen of hope and participation, and we can control this. That would be gone, and what people would see was a beast. So I actually think the democracy is what's keeping um, the feeding at least alive. Okay. Because if you couldn't, if you couldn't, you know, enter these mad circles of sport event like, um, <laughs> it's very decadent, right? Yeah, my team versus your team, or it's it's very decadent. And yeah, if yeah. you took that whole uh, smoke screen away, at least people would have to look at what what's behind it. Well, then you have the, the others of us that don't have a team, and, and we're on the sidelines watching these two battle it out over an imaginary prize that they, they and you and you people just let me know that they're what's behind the smoke screen is a beast. Not two beasts fighting, one beast. One beast controlling both of the one teams, beast. or however many teams, because you said you have like 18 teams over there, right? Something like that. We just had a new team today, the Vegan Party. Fuck, fuck. <laughs> 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 yeah. And, and I can say, I was a Vegan for years. I don't mind Vegans. I mind Vegan politics. What the fuck is up? Okay, well, we, 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 or at least I, 
pronounce yep. it vegan, not vegan. But oh, uh, not that that yeah. matters. I'm just saying it sounds a little no, we- weird to my vegan. ear when you say vegan. Vegan, vegan, vegan. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just. Um, I was, I was one. I lived the vegan lifestyle, right? Yeah. So you got rid of For like you? all your leather belts and shoes yeah. and. Yeah, and, and so you were you were living on. Uh, I what? didn't do honey. No, I didn't eat really? honey either. Really, not even yeah. honey. No. Wow. But I didn't do it because of some political thing. Now, now, what about I the, did it what, for what about the uh, what about the plant people? I'm not the, a plant the, 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 the pro plant people that say <laughs> you're eat, you're killing you're killing my friends. You're eating my friends. <laughs> yeah. No, and I'm not I'm not a I can only eat downfallen fruit and berries that I have rotten kind type either. What? Say it again? There are people who will only eat fruit that fell down by itself, right? Oh, right, right, cuz it's already separated itself from its from mother. From the earth, yeah. <laughs> right. It was given to them by the mother earth, yeah. Right, but if they let no, that... no, I didn't do that. I, I, I became, I, I went vegan. Uh, <laughs> now you got me all conscious about that. Uh, um, because I wanted more energy out of my food. Did you get more energy out of your food? Yes, yes, I did. Really? Yes, I did. Okay, because uh, the, and ve- it felt the very vegans nice and uh, I like the challenge of cooking. The the vegans that I see around, they they look sickly. They look just. Yeah. To, you know, like they're ready to drop dead at any point from from lack of nutrition, from lack of protein, from lack of uh, various. Yeah, things. I will say I was I I had a job. I volunteered at the <laughs> I did a lot of volunteer work in a vegan health food store, full of people who were into um, alternative treatment, alternative diets, who were hemiopathies and all that. So it it wasn't all that difficult to do. do do you know how you can tell if somebody's a vegan or not oh they'll never fucking stop telling you <laughs> <laughs> i didn't know i wasn't all that uh about it all right <laughs> i wasn't because i was hanging out uh with a lot of vegans and people were mainly like sharp skins too sharp skin so sharp skin so they were skinheads against racist Prejudice and right, so they were skinheads, but against racist skin. Okay. And a lot of them were sharp edge too, and sharp edge means absolutely no stimulants. Okay. So no so, coffee, no tea, no cigarettes, no nothing. And then they were vegan, and then <laughs> some of them too were in the whole uh, animal liberation army, right? I, I'm not even familiar with the animal liberation. I, army. I was not the weird one by just being vegan. Let's just put it like that. Okay. <laughs> so, so the the animal liberation army, and I, I immediately my my thought goes immediately to twelve monkeys, something like that. Uh, you're, you're familiar with that Those film. Are the people who will let out minks and stuff like that. Yeah, or whatever you, animals are in a lab for testing or or yeah, other purposes that. such as that. Sure. Yeah, yeah. The army of the twelve. They are monkeys. very well meaning. Extremely well-meaning people, right? I think they think they are. Yeah. <laughs> Either that, or, or I think I think a lot of people uh, join join these groups, these well-meaning groups, uh, just to be part of something, whether they fully buy into it or not. They they want to be part of a group of people that kind of resembles their beliefs and their. And they're willing to go ahead and do actions to show their they've bought into the ideology of that whatever that group is. Yeah, well, I don't know about in America, but the people I hung around, most of them were the weirdos in school, who always looked at life a little different and didn't just you know eat the mainstream bullshit. Yeah. And they ended up finding each other in that uh, squatters and and political movement about the right of being different that was mainly the focus of all my activism was the the right to step out of the square boxes and the concrete and just put art back on the menu okay good and now art is more important than war 
That was pretty much my message was art is more important than war, man. I, I definitely agree with that. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so you, you stepped out of the square boxes. Do you, did you come to realize that there is no box other than that one that you create for yourself? I, that is what I realized later, right? Okay. You see, I I um, I think I did my first activism really when I was twelve. Uh, we squatted the my school's uh, gym room because they were closing down the school, and we loved our school. So we squatted it for a week and and defended our school. And then the politician came and talked to us, and we talked them into not closing our school. And and it worked, huh? That one worked, yeah. Oh, okay. And how many of you were there defending your school? Uh, about 40 or 50 students. Okay. On and off, right? And Moms was, and parents uh, came with food, and we barricaded the gym, right? All right. So, so no one showed up to edu- to classes and stuff like that. Yeah. And what, uh, what kind of school is this? That's a public school. Right, just like a regular high school. Well, I see. We don't. Uh, our schools go from zero grade to tenth grade, right? Oh, uh, okay. I, and I, I was, I was in sixth grade or so. And of course, it was mainly driven by the eighth, ninth, and tenth graders who really loved their school. Okay. Our school was the small school of the of the um, region we lived in. So if they closed our school, we'd be going to these major big public schools. We really liked our little school. Well, that's good. Then you uh, had a cause and you believed in it. And, yeah. Uh, so I, <laughs> I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think that I would ever... Uh... So very well-meaning, right? Because the only thing we got out of it, and this is where the well-meaning is in, right? Uh-huh. That uh, some other school got closed, though. <laughs> So the kids who didn't in in who didn't used to we had a small good school right, but the ones in one of the bigger schools they got closed down so their school became gigantic because they had to close the school. Yeah. And yeah. the people who went to those uh, bigger schools they they didn't have most of them didn't have parents that would stand up and help you squat the gym and stuff like that. Yeah, I would so imagine that's like the well yeah. meaningless, or the well meaningful, right? The well meaningless, I like that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they are, they are very meaningless. All right. Uh, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Um, okay, so that's interesting. You guys are totally different over there. But tell me this: how how much of what you learned in that school, going through all those years of, of that school, have you since realized was bad information? Um, I don't know. Uh, not a lot of it. Because I don't remember being indoctrinated a lot. Okay, but then they, you learn, you, they taught you history, right? <laughs> They taught me history, yes. And and do you find that that history was accurate to the best well, of the your thing knowledge? Is, we got you get history in the later classes in Denmark. You don't have it when you're really young. That's where you mainly do um, Danish and math and stuff like that. And by that time, I had been to the library a lot because I spent most of my classes in the library and not in the classroom because um, I was way ahead on the on. The actual stuff they were doing in class, right. and and the teachers all thought that I was a disturbance, right? <laughs> because I was weird, and I talked a lot, so I got sent to the <laughs> library. So I, <laughs> yeah, so I read a lot of books when I was very, you know, when I wasn't all that, and I had a great librarian, and he would say when I asked him so. Because one of the first things I remember where I was told one thing and I studied it and I read something else and I figured out something else was about Palestine and Israel. And that's what took me to the whole political thing. And I wasn't very old by then. Okay. And I had this great librarian and he spent a lot of time. We read a lot of books. 
and books about various topics. Some of them were, you know, one of them was Palestine and Israel. And I did a big old school report and handed it over. And that wasn't part of what my class was doing. So when we made it to the earlier or later years and they started with history, I had all that knowledge and I would pretty much just ask questions. Right. So I don't remember the whole school as one big um, indoctrination. I more remember it as uh, people helping me and guiding me to find knowledge myself. Well, that's good. Uh, it's so it's so different than what uh, you know in the states here. But uh, any, anyway, back think, to our, uh, our original topic. Yes, the well-meaning. The well-meaning are the worst, and um, <laughs> you, uh, you could take it like. Uh, and again, you know, uh, I can only speak of what I know as far as America goes or what. But uh, uh, back in the, you know, early 1900s, that era, uh, they came out with this prohibition of alcohol, right? Hmm. Are you familiar with that? Yeah. Okay. So uh, the, all these prohibitionists just started this big push to get alcohol prohib- prohibited. And, and they did it, and they actually passed it through a... Uh, constitutional amendment mm. and from that uh brought all of the the gang wars brought up the uh organized uh, mafia and things like, like that uh in order because regardless of what these well-meaning people thinking that alcohol was the was the devil and was going to kill people uh people didn't care people still wanted it they still wanted their freedom uh to, yeah. to, to be able to you know drink if they felt like it or not, and so because of that, that all these underground groups sprung up, all these criminal gangs, uh, and 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 then the the government itself actually trying to fight back against the people that were thinking uh, they that they should still be able to have alcohol, put out poisoned alcohol uh, <laughs> to kill people <laughs> that thought they should be able to drink when the government said no, you can't. Uh, and and then the, the organized crime that started back then goes through on, and on to this day. Um, mm. uh, no, of course, not under the alcohol thing, because that was eventually repealed because of all the violence that was uh, brought up around it. Uh, of course, then they they started prohibiting other things, uh, such as marijuana. And uh, very, yeah, that's, that's what the old uh, uh, drug, the old pot dealers out in Freetown, Christiania, that would, they would, they used to say that if you ask why was um, uh, pot illegal, they would say, well, it's because in America alcohol used to be illegal and then it wasn't. Right. And that's why uh, that's why pot is illegal in Denmark. And everywhere else in the world, because yeah. cause they 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 shoved it into the UN charter uh, mm-hmm. that. Uh, that marijuana would be illegal all around the world. Yeah, because uh, America needs uh, to have a war on their own people about yes. something. Right. Uh, well, they need it because they need to, you know, criminalize groups or at least put groups in fear uh, over uh, being called a criminal uh, or treated mm-hmm. as a criminal and and be able to do bad things to people they, the government, uh, considered undesirable uh, which means anybody that just didn't, you know, follow the agenda blindly. And and it is the appeal to the well-meaning, right? Well, it, it it's, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, well, I mean, that's how it all started. The well-meaning, those people yeah. that were prohibitionists, were mm-hmm. were were the well-meaning. They were they were going to save you from the demon alcohol. The God fearing people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I heard about those, like the silent majority, too. Which, you know, I mean, even those people, I I would think they would think it was weird to be demonizing alcohol, uh, being there were Christians, and Jesus himself drank plenty of wine, and um, (laughs) so... so. But the things that uh, Christian people have been able to tell themselves even though they read the Bible, right? It's just amazing to me. You can read the book, and you can still tell yourself something completely different. Oh, absolutely. And, I mean, there's a whole thing that you you see people uh, calling people that don't believe exactly as they do, various names or trying to do bad things it's, to them. 
uh, when the teachings of their uh, their guy Jesus there uh, were 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 to not judge other folk. Yeah. Not, I don't get how can you, you how can you look at you know be a Christian and then I'm just that and then be a lady Supreme Court judge. I wait. I, I don't know. That, that doesn't you know. I'm sorry, but that doesn't connect. Huh? It does. That really isn't connected though. Okay, explain explain to me how a lady Christian being a Supreme Court judge uh, goes against the Christian doctrine. Because Christianity is always a patriarchy. Women ain't supposed to speak. Women ain't supposed to hold power or position. Women doesn't own anything. Women are, are a property to their men. You can, you can just look at the Ten Commandments. Those would be the one thing that all Christians kind of do agree upon, right? I guess I, I would hope so. Yeah, they're not written for women. Women are na are, are mentioned in them. Yes. Wives, yes, wives and stock, slaves and servants. Yeah. You can't be a Christian and a woman and then you know all of a sudden assume a position of power. Women aren't supposed to speak in uh, in churches. That's so in the Bible, right? I, I I don't know. I I don't. I'm not. I'm unfamiliar with that. It said so in the Bible. With those women, teachings, women don't speak in churches. No. Oh, what about somebody like uh, Joan of Arc? She was she was strongly Christian. Uh, in denial, then. <laughs> <laughs> Completely in denial, or a big fat liar, though. Uh, okay. I think I think the Christian God is pretty clear on. Um, on, on women and power. We, that weird ain't having it. <laughs> okay, well, you say the Christian, the Christian God, but that's the same as like the Jewish God, right? Yeah. Same God. But uh, yeah, yeah. But 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 then the Christians threw in, okay, this is the Son. Yeah. So now you'll have him between between you and God. Yeah. I guess between I don't know. Next to, I, I don't really know how it works. Um. No. I'm just saying, it, yeah, how can you, I mean, come on. Uh, it, that's the, you know, that's the same as, uh, how, can, how can you be a Muslim woman in a power position? Come on. Then uh, you're not a Muslim woman. I, I would think not, yeah. They they don't connect. <laughs> yeah, Flash, Flash points out that uh, Christians rewrote the Jewish book. Yeah. But all those, all those Abrahamic fucktards, they're all patriarchy, though. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> Women are property to their men. That's pretty much it. You know, like livestock and servants and slaves. Do, do you, are you the property of Flash? Sure. We can say that. Is he then <laughs> responsible for me? <laughs> I would think so, yeah. Yeah, I'm all right. Yeah, I mean, sure, sure. You, you got to care for your property here. Yeah. 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 All right. All right. I'm just saying, I mean, that's just how much bullshit can you actually have in this world, right? We just we just uh, turn all these wheels and suddenly something isn't what it was. Well, there, uh, there's apparently an endless supply of bullshit. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> exactly. the, the, the bullshit comes by the truckload and, 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 and there's an uh, endless line of trucks there. Uh, yeah. uh, shoveling that stuff in. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know to be, because uh, I wanted to touch, because with all this well-meaning and the hopeful and all this name-calling we're putting other people into, right? And I fall definitely into a couple of those categories myself if I don't pay attention to myself. Because I, I have hope and I have ideologies and I can get that flame of hope and ah, it will take me and I'm going to go fix stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. And until I, you know, walk past a mirror and I go, for fuck's sake, sir, you ain't fixing anything. <laughs> 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 Whatever you touch, you're just going to fuck up even more. So just, you know, go do art at least. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know. Yeah. Do whatever it is you enjoy, and 
Uh, yeah. And, and, and that, that'll that'll enrich your life if you if you if you're not enjoying life, you're doing something wrong. Uh, yeah. You got, you got something messed up. Uh, yeah, and if you're spending your entire life fixing shit. Or fixating you, on shit. Yeah. Um, Chances are you're part of the problem, man. If you're uh, fixing shit. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And if um, you're about hope and change, chances are you're probably part of the problem, too. <laughs> 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 and it just that's heartbreaking to to realize though, right? Uh, I guess. I, I mean it would be to the person that was that was doing the hope and changey type stuff. Yeah. Uh, well, if once they once they realize, if they ever realize that they are not only part of the problem but they're um part of the, the problem causing the problems to themselves, uh as, as and the word, and you know the part about the well-meaning Grimner is they cause problems, especially to others. Yeah, and, and they can never be fulfilled um, no. in their own life because, uh, regardless of what comes about, they're, they're still going to want something else different, something else change, something else to push, a new cause. Hmm. Yeah. Well, we were talking about the golden rule, right? Yeah, yeah, one second. And and we figured out there were three of them, right, Grimner? Oh, yeah, yeah, there's, yeah, yeah, there's three. So, <laughs> there's the American one. Yeah, that's yours. Go for it. Yeah, uh, do unto others before they do unto you. Yes, <laughs> that's the aggressive one, right? <laughs> yeah. Paranoid one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, do right. unto others before they do unto you. And then there's the, you know, kind of the aggressive one that would say, do unto others as you wish done unto you, right? Right, yeah, yeah. And I don't like either of those. I ain't going to go, for, I'm going to go with the passive one that says, don't do unto others what you don't wish done unto you, right? Right. So just, you know, don't go about doing for others all the time. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, I really like these kind of cakes, so I baked you 13. Here you go. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I need 13 cakes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right. Uh, so, it, but just, you know, don't do to other people what you don't wish done to yourself. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> I, I mean, it, it's fine to uh, uh, be able to, you know, tell other people about what your ideas and thoughts are. Your wants, whatever, but once once you start saying, uh, because I like this, you have to like this, and I don't like that, so you can't do that. Be because I know what's better for us. Right. Yeah. That, that's the voice of the well-meaning, right? I know what's better. I will well-meaningly take care of this for you. You don't need to concern yourself. Right. Or, or you can apply that to voters. Any voter yep. out yep. there, uh, they're voting because they believe that this person is going to help somebody somewhere, somehow, or this thing that somebody's doing, they shouldn't be doing. So they're going to vote and have the, the, the violence of, of the state pushed upon other people or hoping they, that's what they hope with their vote anyway um, that I don't like this so I'm going to vote for this thing so that the state will, will threaten you with violence uh, in, in, the, in the worst manner possible um, it, it could be financial could be kidnapping could be murder because well you were, you were eating the wrong kind of fruit or whatever yeah. and, and, and truly and, this is it Right, it's the smoke screen again. Yeah, they don't. They, the beast has gotten so big that they, you know, if you vote, you're under the hope or the faith-based impression that you can control this beast. Right, because you're voting about taking on the reins of it. Right, you're gonna ride it and control it. Right, and I'm. T it's gone way bigger. No, nobody is gonna control that beast. No, not at all. And now. With all this corona nonsense, the beast has has grown ten times its other size, previous yeah. size, and uh, yeah. I mean they don't they don't even need to pass laws now. You just have this one person that some group of people within the area, the geographic area that you're located in, 
said, all right, well, we want her to run the show here. And so she said, all right, I'm going to run the show. And now with this uh, uh, pandemic or plandemic or scamdemic, whatever you want to call it, um, uh, I have I have given myself ultimate I've given myself ultimate power to do to force everybody to do anything that I say regardless of how illogical it is how meaningless it is how uh, and and they say they're following the science when they're absolutely not following the science and they're enforcing or they're having their thugs uh, go out and enforce their edicts on everybody. And then they get people, the regular folk out there, some of them who voted for that, that person, some of them who didn't. Uh, they get those people out there saying, oh, this person's not following these crazy edicts. I got to report them to somebody so some bad stuff will happen to them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, if, if I'm going to be hurt, then by God, it's so are you. Or oh, not even that. It's just like you may possibly in some way uh, be causing me or somebody else some kind of harm, even though it's nonsense. Uh, so I'm going to make sure you get harmed in some way or another. The last thing, you know, the last time I checked, science is based on evidence, right? Evidence needs a certain kind of um, heaviness, right? Yeah. you got to have a lot of data to be evidence-based. Uh, if you're not you just going to be projecting and, or and it's got to be accurate right if you want to use if you're going to be evidence based you're going to need a fuckload of data i don't even see how this this covid-19 and a worldwide pandemic has even gotten enough data to even claim to be science or evidence -based. oh they just made it up they did it's just like with with the whole global warming nonsense they just they, and they just can, manufactured they can, data yeah they, they, and they've been doing nothing but destroying their own data from day one right. by changing the parameters of how they gather it all the way through. Nothing consistent comes from this data. Yeah. I work with actuarians. I worked in an actuarial department for three and a half years. Actuarians, are pre that's what they do. Right. They make predictive models on data, right? Mm -hmm. About risks in a very high fall and many factor environments, right? Sure. I know the amount of data these people want if they're going to make a, just one kind of prediction or say they were based on evidence. And you don't have that amount of data nowhere in the world to do that. No, no. Not with this COVID-19. And you're 100% you're right, Moose Girl. Mean people are mean. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't agree more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I'm with you. There's nothing scientific in any of this. There can't be. No, and the thing is, so they they spit out all this data, and they say mm -hmm. this is what's happening. This is what's going on, and then evidence comes out that they faked all that data, manufactured all that data, and the people yeah. ignore that. They don't care. They go with the original manufactured data, uh, and regardless of the fact that look, we have the evidence here. They made all of this up. And the people go, yeah, but we, we like the other data because it makes us scared. And, and then, then, then the, the state comes along and says, oh, we're going to save you from that evil fake data. And, and so that gives us comfort. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. All I can say with the amount, okay, this is the paradox of the data-driven age, right? The more data humans collect, the more refined the models get, the less we can predict the future. Right, it becomes garbage. I mean, too much data becomes garbage at a certain point. And you have and you have so many outcomes by now, right? Everything is escalating and everything is happening at a factor 1,000 than what it did just, you know, 10 years ago. So for it, every prediction you can make, you're going to have tons of new outcomes that change all the time. Right. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a quickening going on um, mm. of... of I don't know even what to call. I, 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 tyranny is the best thing I could come up with on that. Um, yeah. Uh, but it, but it, but it's rampant and hog wild now. Be I mean it just anything now. If if you're getting this bad data from these people that want to control and manipulate you to to act and believe and think in a certain way, if you say something against that, that is now considered a crime. 
for mm-hmm. for you questioning, even questioning uh, uh, what their intentions are and what their agenda is and, and what what they're uh, where where they're getting their information from. So if you go off and you but, say your your data is incorrect and bad, they criminalize you for that. It, it, the U.S. start because in Denmark we already started. We're sick and tired of politicians, and we've been that way for 20 years now, right? Right. And the well-meaning uh, opposition to that is to go towards the technocracy. Sure. So we're moving. We're moving towards the technocracy. In the whole Denmark, world right? is. Yeah, the whole world is. Yes. So you're doing the same in America. You're getting so fed up with the uh, value-based, so now people start looking for the fact-based. Right. Not understanding that that's as biased as the value-based shit is. Sure. Right. Because bias you're never going to get out of, right? Well, no, I mean, everybody's got their own bias, and it's... They carry it with them. <laughs> so, so do you see the move towards technocracies? That's a dangerous move. So do you see it as a good move? I do not see it as a good move. No. I, I don't I don't see any of these ocracies as a good thing. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a fan of the ocracies or the isms. Um, uh, <laughs> it's the uterus of uh, Star Trek, though, right? <laughs> What? I wanted to say I wanted to say uterus. The uterus of Star Trek. <laughs> of Star Trek, technocracy. What? Well, right. Okay. If you, all right. Okay. On Star Trek, all the Star Trek shows, you got all these uh, ships flying around and some crews, and it all looks fun yeah. and wonderful. And they're or, all based on uh, or, or, on models and algorithms and or dangerous and exciting. But if you look behind the Star Treks to the uh, situation that's going on on Earth, uh, and they show you, oh yeah, we don't have war, we don't have hate, we don't have hunger, we we fixed all of that. That's the promise of but, the technocracy. But, but the only right? way they they could have possibly done that is through total control of the population. Yes. Right. So <laughs> so a, it's a dystopia. Star Trek is a dystopia. It is. The one you are, you are not seeing the underground opposition movement of Earth. And I promise you, it is there. Oh, no question about it. <laughs> that is for a Where there is humans and there is government, there is the underground opposition. That's that's a given. Uh, absolutely. Uh, and, and, you know, anytime you try and control people, um, you're, you're going to have problems. Uh, and it's like that uh, lion Princess Leia from Star Wars. <laughs> and she said, Go. The, the, the tighter you make your grip, Tarkin, the more will slip through your fingers. Oh, yes. Yeah, so... Um, <laughs> we that. have a Danish Christmas song that says, If you tighten the string, you will kill the baby. What do you got? That's a Christmas. <laughs> you have to string around the baby's neck. <laughs> yeah. So that's what people say. If you tighten the string, you're going to kill the baby. All right. I don't know what you do with a string around a baby's neck in the first place. I don't place. know either. But, <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of those baby things that, you know, they're telling this to babies and kids, you know, like the, uh, the rockabye baby thing. Um, mm. You got a baby up in the treetops rocking in a cradle, yeah. <laughs> and then the branch has got to break, and the baby's got to fall to the ground. Uh, it's just like, yeah, that's a great story for kids. Yeah, <laughs> or that, or yeah. the Hansel and Gretel story, you know, uh, where where they uh, go out, go out to the grandma's house and get eaten by the wolf. <laughs> yeah. But that's oh, wait, that's a little Red Riding Hood. The Cancel and Gretel is they get stuffed in the oven by the witch. Right. By the witch, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Either way, yeah. I mean, you're telling these kids these stories about all these horrible things that are going to happen to them. <laughs> yeah, the Brother Grimm's tales. Uh, Those are grim. Grim, very grim. They're grimmer than I am. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Uh, the Danish word, because grim is a Danish word that means ugly. Grim? Grim. Yeah, it's grim. What? Say again? Yeah, it just sounds like you're clearing your throat. <laughs> I know that's what Danny sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> do you need a cough lozenge or something there? <laughs> Why do you think only five million people speak this language? I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah. 
Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> so uh uh I, so we can't talk about the will meaning and not talk about the Kyle Rittenhouse thing, right? Yeah, sure, let's talk about Kyle. Yeah. Yeah. He was well meaning, right? I'm thinking he's a martyr of the well meaning though, right? Well, he's he, out there he, fixing things. But 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 he was he was a well meaning guy and became the martyr of of the rest of the the well meaning uh, that were gathered in that, you know, on that street on that day. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, to me, he was just stupid. But, um, and, <laughs> and, but isn't the one, isn't it just as stupid to go over and tell people to, uh, uh, put on a mask or don't put on a mask? Or... Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's the same well meaning, right? I, I actually make an effort to go out of my way to do something to tell it to, you know, push you back. Right. Well, I, I think, I mean, he should have never been there. Uh, I mean, I understand the purpose behind it all. Um, now, I, I don't know, of course, all the details and facts about exactly. He's a patriot, though, right? Wasn't he a well-meaning patriot? Yeah, There's patriot. Patriots, patriots are well-meaning, and and I, I'm not a fan of patriots either. Um, <laughs> I, I'm not because uh, what are you you're saying that because I was born on this piece of land under this you know group of thugs that call itself the state of this area um, that created these roles, I'm better than the people on the other side of this imaginary line in the dirt. Uh, so. Uh, hooray for my my state! Boo for yours. Okay, so when okay, so when the American Antifa, because I know that they've been doing that in the earlier years before they did all the riots and stuff. I know the Antifa in America; they used to go out and help, you know, uh, grandmothers or single people who got evicted from their houses, right? I I no, I didn't know that. No, but. Uh, and and uh, they would travel from state to state, you know, as part of an uh, being activists, and go help grandma to fight off corporate banker military looking guards from coming and kicking her out with force of her house because she couldn't pay her her house mortgage. I yeah I, I was I I didn't know that they uh, actually did like humanitarian style work. I would assume they're Antifa people because. Uh, well, just black block, really, and that is what Antifa is in America, I think. But I've seen all those. I've I've seen a lot of videos of that, where you got uh, military big goons with machine rifles and everything that are corporate guards from the banks kicking out people from their houses in America. And these activists go there and at least document it and stand by those people's sides as it's happening, right? Yeah. You know, at least calling out and saying, "What the." Why are you doing this? Right. And well, I'm just that's for me. That's no different than what that Kyle Rittenhouse did. In a sense. Yeah. He went to a situation where he saw some somebody's property being fucked up and and stolen and and destroyed, and he helped protect it, right? Well, you would think, but to me, it was kind of like you know walking into a forest fire with a squirt gun. And thinking you're gonna help somehow. Yeah, that's that's the other side. I'm just trying to be. You know, <laughs> I, I mean, that's the other side. <laughs> you're really, you're really, uh, you're 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 not benefiting anybody by being there. You're yeah. you're a you're a burr under the saddle, if you will. Um, yeah. and, and you know those, those people are gonna do what they're gonna do there, and and you and whatever little group of, of folk you're with. Uh, thinking that that somehow uh, you're you're going to change this this massive mob of people's minds to not mm -hmm. do what what they're thinking, and I don't even know what's driving these people in the first place to go out there and and cause all this vandalism. Uh, if, if their if their purpose is as stated, is to be against police brutality. Why are you why are you, why are you burning down your neighbors' stores? Their livelihoods. They're angry. Why They're just are, angry. You're you're attacking your neighbor when they had nothing to do with, with the situation that's going on that you're supposedly out there to be against. Yeah. 
Um, so I so I understand that you know certain people would get upset and go and try and prevent the situation from furthering or extending, but the way they went about it is, is just wrong and and destined to cause more problem than it fixes, which is the the well meaning. Uh, <laughs> the well, martyr. Uh, well, becoming the martyr at that point, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So he is though. He's gaining a following, isn't he? Oh sure, no, he's got a huge following. Um, and then of course anybody that uh, follows him or thinks he was right is whether they are or not labeled as a Trump person because yeah, war cultures love martyrs. The whole war propaganda, no matter how you look at it, it, it and, and religion, it, they are all so connected. State and religion and war and all that nasty shit, those are connected. Oh, right? big time, big time, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because, I, I mean, you know, uh, the religion, you know, became the state. Uh, you know, it used to be, I mean, the Catholic Church used to be really powerful back in the day. Sex was invented by church, right? I believe so, yeah. 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 But the, but they they um uh, they well I don't know Julius Caesar sure did his share of fair share of taxing. Um, <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> you know, ruling elite fucktards invented taxes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I I don't know, but um, that that kind of but now I mean the state is the religion of most people. Whether or not they also claim to be part of some other religion, uh, they 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 bow to the state uh, on deeply bended knee, and whatever the state says is right. Uh, and if you speak out against the state, you're you're like you know a demon or something. Um, because that's what the technocracy is, though. When you lose, when you lost faith in humans, and you start gaining more trust in in the system and in state. Sure. Sure. When when the when um, I'm gonna go with again do the opposite right <laughs> uh, because what we're doing is not working so more of it the same is not gonna somehow magically create something new um, so the whole thing is maybe start trusting in human beings again and not in systems and states okay but our um... maybe start trusting your neighbor. Yeah, well, I see. That's, that's kind of you know, if if your if your neighbor you know strongly believes in stuff and and you don't, see, it's it's, it's a situation nice where <laughs> what's that? That makes for some nice evenings. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I know. Well, when you debate shit, that makes people insane. Yeah, but as far as like the technocracy goes, um, are, are you familiar with the story behind uh, the the song by Rush Twenty One Twelve? Fish. What? No, I don't think so. Oh, <laughs> okay. Think. All right. Fish. Yeah. fish. <laughs> no, it's it's like technocracy taken to the you know the maximum degree. Um, where 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 the the state uh, is 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 basically the the religious technocracy, uh, yes. if you can kind of wrap your head around that. Um, That's where you are today, though. Oh no, it's it's well, they, I mean, it's it goes beyond that. I wouldn't be surprised if by the year twenty one twelve, that's not completely accurate. Um, you you should read the story or at least listen to the song, but. Uh, it you know might be quicker just to read it. It's you know twenty odd minutes yeah. or something yeah. like that. Uh, but anyway, it's a great story, um, <laughs> it, it, and it follows exactly along with the the line of where society as a whole globally is headed. It's funny because when I went to school, my uh, Danish teacher forced us to read. Uh, a book called uh, See the Day, the Light of the Day. And uh, that whole book, it's from a Danish author who writes really weird books. But that whole book is is one big story warning us against technocracy. 
Yeah. And yeah. it was about a world where um, suicide became an epidemic. So there was a worldwide suicide epidemic because people lost the meaning of living. So as a counter to that, everybody started living one-day lives. So they would wake up in the morning somewhere and with a little piece of paper that told them, you are today married to this guy, you work as this, you do this, and this is your day, you have these two kids. And then they would live out that day. And the next, during the night, somebody would come in and put move people around and they would take this drug and they would wake up the next day in a completely new life, right? Okay. And the story is two people fell in love, and uh, that's their story about how they escaped that whole madness. But that whole book is like one big warning against technocracy where, you know, because we have something as horrible as a suicide epidemic, because we lost all, all faith and hope, there it goes again, right? All the hope in humanity, we shouldn't let systems and computers and, and um, I'm guessing, intelligence take over. Yeah, I mean, there's, there are, and it sounds like a good story, but there are a ton of stories out there warning you against the exact, that exact kind of thing. You know, you yeah. go with Minority Report, Fahrenheit 451, uh, Brave New World, uh, 1984. Uh, just take, take your up, pick. Uh, 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 Celeste Stallone, weird movie, what's it called? With the three shells. <laughs> With the three shells? Yeah. Three okay, shells. I don't know. Celeste Stallone, Sandra Bullock. Three shells. I, I don't know. Instead of toilet paper, they got this system. <laughs> three shells. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, You're right. It's uh, something that we've been warned about. Right, so... Demolition Man, thank uh, you. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I didn't really care for that film, but... Um, yeah, right, I guess. So anyway, <laughs> yeah, sly. Uh, but anyway, you can't. Nobody can say when this stuff comes and it's and it's coming strongly and it's coming fast and we're halfway there maybe now. Uh, yeah. You can't say you weren't warned. No, because you started reporting on this eight years ago when I first met Grimnir. Yeah. You started. You had the uh, Ray Kurzweil. Um, and his prediction for singularity. Yeah. Yeah. He did a radio show about all that. Yeah. yeah. With Tao. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy. All right. Well, we're out of time here. Um, so, um, good conversation. I don't know if we covered. Yeah. Did we? Yeah. I don't you know. We, we didn't fully cover the information that we were intended to, but. That's all right. We covered plenty of other stuff that, uh, whatever, makes sense. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. So, um, I think we bashed the world meeting enough, though, right? I don't know. I don't think there's really ever enough bashing for that. <laughs> true. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah, we got always got next week to continue that. <laughs> yeah, next week. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Karens <laughs> and what they mean to you. Um, <laughs> that's a whole that's a whole thing that started this year. Karens. We never had Karens oh, before this year. They are well meaning, man. Oh, they're super well meaning and super oh, dangerous. Um Yeah, go be well meaning somewhere else. Yeah. Anyway, thanks to everybody for tuning in here to It's All Connected with Circle and Grimner. Yeah. See, you're first. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Just listen to the jingle, here. Yeah, yeah, it will yeah. lead you to the truth. We'll, we'll be back next week with another episode. Same bat time, same bat channel. Uh, tomorrow is um, hopefully uh, Flash in a Perfect World at 3 p.m. Eastern. We'll see if he does the show or not. Okay. Sometimes he I do. Sometimes he don't. <laughs> Something tells me he will. Okay, good. Uh, and uh, check the schedule on RealLibertyMedia.com and RLMRadio.xyz for all the other shows coming up throughout the week. And uh, what else do I got to say? Uh, bring back Mary. Huh? More Mary on RLM. Yeah, more, more Mary. More Granny. More Gram Z yes. for me. All right. Yes. <laughs> All right, if anybody wants to do a show, just let me know. You can do it in the chat, but I prefer to use the form on reallibertybd.com, the contact form. Uh, and uh, I'll get you set up, really, really. Oh, by the way, there is a new version of Butt 
I haven't tried it out yet. It just came yesterday. Uh, oh, Grimnir got a new butt. A new butt. I got a fresh butt. Fresh, clean Ooh, butt. Nice butt. Fresh, clean butt. Um, oh, <laughs> right. I think your butt would be good for the Moose Girl and uh, Donna. Okay. Right? I'm good with that. Yeah. <laughs> Moose Girl and Donna crawl into Grimnir's butt. Well, not crawl into, but, you know. Hey. <laughs> Share your butt, man. They, they, can, they can squeeze it or whatever. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> as we digress here, uh, thanks, everybody. Uh, have a good day. Have a good week. Have a good month, year, life. Peace. <laughs>